Hello, it's uh, Thursday tea time and I've just got time to do a book haul, <laughs> a mini book haul from today <clears throat> because books have come my way this afternoon. Um, while we went out shopping, uh, we stopped at Cheadle, and, um, which was where Kitty, <laughs> Patricia Routledge in Victoria Wood, used to uh, hang out. <laughs> well, it's where she lived, wasn't it? Anyway, so uh, we've been charity shopping, uh, Chazza shopping, although I'm forbidden from saying Chazza, apparently. Jeremy doesn't like it. Uh, I think it's funny, though. Marple. This came out last year. 12 new stories by 12 modern writers uh, working on uh, new Miss Marple stories. All kinds of names I recognise from things. Uh, Naomi Alderman, of course, who was one of my students at UEA a long time ago, 20 years ago. People like Lucy Foley, uh, Ruth Ware, people I've read um, doing their own um, thrillers. Val McDermott, who I've read a little bit of. I find it a bit brutal what she does. I also heard this, the, the most stupid radio play ever by by her, um, I've got to say, to do with people getting... Um, it was a Radio 4 thing, and it was about a, a music festival where everybody got food poisoning from eating the burgers. And the whole play uh, was about people essentially shitting themselves at, at, a, at, a, at some music festival, which... Um, <clears throat> would have been fun doing this sound design. Anyway, I'll not hold it against her, that ridiculous radio play. I'm sure her Miss Marple story's good. But I started reading this in the car. And I read the first story while Jeremy was um, shopping in the famous uh, Sifters record shop in, uh, I think it's Burnage, really, rather than Didsbury. Anyway, he was looking there, and he's been buying things like the uh, Bronsky Beat with Eartha Kit and the Three Degrees. So we've had quite a good afternoon of finding things. Adrian Mitchell's uh, poems, Best of Adrian Henry from 1970, and one of these beautiful um, Jonathan Cape collections. Oh, cat poem. He's just jumped down. You're sleek, you're black and sleek and beautiful. What a pity your best friends won't tell you. Your breath smells of kitty cat. Well, I'm not that impressed by that, and neither's socks, he's nicked off. Anyway, I love the Mersey poets. Sometimes they're a bit gnomic and a bit precious. That was. Um, <clears throat> but on the whole, we enjoy their work. Right, new books, brand new books. Maggie Sullivan, her sixth Coronation Street novel. Now, this is a series that began maybe seven or eight years ago. I've read all of them. They're published by HarperCollins. And um, this, this one's called A Celebration on Coronation Street. And we're getting closer to 1960 and when the TV series begins. The, the series of books, uh, Snow on the Cobbles, Christmas on Coronation Street, Mother's Day on Coronation Street, have been bliss, completely bliss. I think they've been really well done. They begin during the war and um, take us through almost to the beginning of the TV show as as we knew it. I'm a Coronation Street obsessive, not the modern show. That's dreadful and speakable, but um, classic curry I adore. This is 1953, so hopefully it'll go <coughs> closer to the curry we know from the 60s. Anyway, I, uh, I think Maggie Sullivan's done a fantastic job with this series. I'm really, I'm gonna close the door because DJ Jeremy, has come to life and started playing his records and don't want copyright issues. Um, I think she's done a great job. I think HarperCollins have let her down by only doing the sixth book as paperback, which is a great shame because I've got lovely hardbacks of the first five. HarperCollins, what are you doing? They're my publisher for my um, cartoon books. So I'm telling them, <laughs> do us hardbacks for a celebration on Coronation Street and carry on doing Cory books. I get the feeling this is the last one. I'm not sure. I hope not. And this, AJ Finn. This is his second novel, End of Story. I read the first one. It's here somewhere. Everything I read made me think he sounded like a show-off git. <laughs> I read a long piece of The New Yorker, which didn't do many favours, and told us how much he'd been paid for these books, which puts you off immediately. But 
I loved The Woman in the Window in the end. I thought it was a terrific book. I loved the film as well. I thought that was great. What is it, Socks? He's shouting at me. <laughs> he doesn't like the three degrees. Um, and I'm hoping this is as good. He's become somebody I would, I, I order straight away in hardback. So I hope he lives up to that. That's a big deal. Buying somebody new in hardback. It's not everybody. It's hardly anybody. And Tyler, I would say and uh, a handful of others and that's about it so um that's my haul for today i'm gonna sit down this evening and finish hopefully william boyd um ordinary thunderstorms which is my book club book for uh, our local group which actually i'm enjoying now at first i wasn't sure i thought it was a bit naff but i think it's all right it's very readable but we'll see how it goes. I like a good thriller, and that's certainly living up to it um, so far. Anyway, I'll um, talk again soon.